Hello everyone, uh, this is the third and possibly final chapter of my video series on converting my Baldwin C630T analog organ to a digital MIDI organ. And the reason I say possibly final is because I'm debating whether or not to do the stops. And obviously stops are an important part of playing the organ, but destroying or modifying these stops would destroy the original sounds on this instrument completely. And I didn't mention this before, but one of my goals with this midification is to leave as much of the original wiring intact as possible. And to a great degree, I succeeded with that. I just didn't really have the heart to rip it all out. Um, the workmanship in this organ is very good. The When it was originally built, it was quality work. Everything was neatly organized. Notes were color-coded. So I didn't really want to rip all of it out. Um, so I haven't done the stops yet. I might eventually just put MIDI ones over top of these or something like that, just so I can maintain the original sounds. Even though the original sounds don't work too well anymore, still I just don't want to change it too much. Um, but otherwise, this midification was a complete success. Um, all the keys work, the pedals work, the new pistons I added worked, or work, um... I converted all of the swell manual key switches from the elastomer type to the copper rail type. Two of the five key switch boards on the great manual needed conversion, and thankfully none of them on the pedal board needed conversion. And as you can see, there are a bunch of groups of key switches, and they're arranged by pitch. And since the MIDI controller only required an on-off, one on-off switch per key, I was able to leave most of them intact. So on the swell manual, the only stops that don't work now are the one foot stops. On the great manual, I used the percussion key switches for the top three octaves, and the percussions didn't work anyways. Um, and for the bottom two, I just used the one foot ones. So on the great manual, the percussions don't work, and the bottom two octaves of the one foot stops don't work. And on the pedal, the silver rail ones were for the 8 and 4 foot stops, or I, sorry, 16 and 8 foot stops, which admittedly are a big part of the pedal, but most of the stops still work anyway, so I consider that a success. Um, all of the ones on the swell needed modification. There were no percussion stops on the swell, so I modified all of these. I put the copper on, the ones on the great, the top three octaves did not need modification and the pedal also none of it needed modification. One concern that I would like to bring up and this was actually a concern I had but I'm sure someone had is with the copper wire and the silver. Copper oxidizes, silver tarnishes, and that will reduce conductivity over time and I was worried about that but the design of these switches actually prevents that. They're self-cleaning switches. I'll get into why I have this broken piece of key switch later. But as you can see, where the um, silver wire used to come into contact with the other silver wire, the silver rail, it's actually shinier. And that's because when the wires come into contact with each other, they actually come together in a scraping motion. So it actually cleans the key contact every time you press the key so you can kind of see that here when I press that note you can see all of them are gently scraping you can even see on the copper it's kind of shinier where the gold wire comes into contact with the copper so I'm not really worried about oxidation or tarnish but if it ever gets so bad and this is the case for the copper and the silver you can really just slide out the copper wire and put a new one in, the same with the silver. Although I think those silver wires are probably hard to get, so if the silver becomes so bad, you can either clean it or just slide a copper wire in. Um, so yeah, that's the key switches. Um, the pedal ones needed a little bit of modification. Well, they all needed diodes installed because I'm using a matrix system. The system I bought is from a website called 
Hopware hardware, and I highly recommend them. Their MIDI controllers are super easy to use, affordable, and um, I really like the experience. Essentially how the matrix system works is that all, all of the notes on the organ, like all the pitches are grouped together. So all the C's are connected, that's all the black wires. C sharps are the brown wire, and D are the red wire, and so on. And each key is isolated by a diode, which I had to put in because there were resistors there. And the reason there's a diode is just to prevent short circuits when the matrix system is working. And essentially how it works is each group of 12 has a common line, which is this, a common scan line. Each one on the... These manuals actually have six scan lines. The very top C needed its own, needed its own. Um, so just one note on that one, but it needed it. Um, and how it works is it rapidly switches which group of 12, which octave is being scanned by the microcontroller. So essentially you can use a lot less wire to get a lot more data into the microcontroller. And I really appreciate that because this system took a long time to wire, even with me reusing a lot of the original wire. And I can't imagine how long it would take if each note had to be wired individually to a MIDI controller. Um, but the problem with that, as I mentioned this earlier, the pedal one needed a little bit of modification. The pedal ones weren't grouped as nicely so the form factor was pretty much the same. Boards were the same size, but there would only be a wire every few. So it would actually be in groups. One of these would have six on the pedal board. And obviously the pedal, there's the pedal board over there. The um, pedal notes are spaced further apart. So the first octave, one of them was in six, the other one in six, wire joined them together. There's your group of 12. Second and third octave were a little bit more challenging because they grouped them in groups of five. So I actually had to cut the metal on one of the boards to electrically isolate it. And it was really nerve wracking because on the great manual, I um, took out this and essentially sat like this the second octave, the top five notes of the second octave were hooked up to the percussion circuits. And I was like, oh, well, since it doesn't already work and I'm not going to be using this, I will try cutting it a bunch of times on this. As you can see, most of these cuts are fails and one of them resulted in me cutting the whole board in a half. So I was really nervous about cutting the pedal, but it ended up working out really well. And it's a nice clean cut. And the matrix matrixing worked out perfectly on the pedal contacts. The hardest part of the pedal contacts, actually, these are them down here, is getting this big metal thing out. Um, there were a couple of screws that were s cranked in there super tightly. Probably has never been removed since the organ was built. And once that was out, it was simple to just install the diodes. Relatively simple to cut the um, key switch. And get it working. So that's it for the key switches. I'm going to get into the controller now. So this is the MIDI controller. It's from Hopfair Hardware again. Um, essentially it's an Arduino Mega 2560 with special firmware on it and that firmware will use the hardware to scan each octave or group of 12 switches. And then it will encode that into a MIDI signal which is then sent to my MIDI interface and in turn sent to the computer. Um, the hookup for this was pretty simple. 12 notes go there. Um, and then those are run into breadboards. There's one there for the pedal notes. Um, so that those 12 notes can be accessed many places in the organ. So if I end up hooking up the stops or adding more pistons or something like that, it's easy to tap off of the uh, lines. There's another breadboard way in there. You probably cannot see it. Um, and then all of these lines here, a lot of them are unused. They are the common lines 
and they go into this breadboard which has a wire run out to each respective group. Orange one up here is for the expression pedal, that's an analog input on the Arduino. Um, so yeah, it was super easy to hook up, it just needs a USB power source, which any Arduino Mega does, and then the MIDI out, and then here you can kind of see that each manual only needs 12 wires going to the notes, plus the six common lines, and for the pedal, three common lines, so it really didn't need a lot of wire, but it's deceiving because it does take a long time. You can see down there the wires coming out the bottom of the grate. For amplification, I was debating on whether or not I should fix the original power amplifiers, and I opted to not do it uh, because I found this little one on Amazon for really cheap. It's a 2.1 power amplifier, so essentially it has two stereo channels plus a subwoofer channel. So I, these speakers are 8 ohm except for the subwoofer which is 4 ohms. So I wired the two left ones together and the two right ones together and when you add the impedances up it ends up all of it being 4 ohms and this amplifier works with 4 ohm speakers so that was good. I just needed a 12 volt power supply which I'm using this switching power supply that was for an old hard drive enclosure that I have. Um, it allows you to adjust the bass and the treble and then the master volume. I've set it to a um, maximum volume and then the computer will allow me to adjust it lower than that. Um, now we'll go onto the computer. So this is the PC that's going to be inside the organ. I just built it yesterday. Uh, it's a budget oriented PC, but it's not a weak system. It's got an AMD Ryzen 3 3200G processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, which I might add another 8 soon. Um, it works pretty well now, though, and then that's just an old laptop hard drive I had, 320 gigabytes, and a budget power supply. It was only $30. Um, and I, I literally just screwed the components, or in the power supply's case, zip-tied it right to this piece of plywood here. Um, and then when it's closed, there will be air coming in from down where the pedals connect, and then there will be a little gap here, so airflow will not be restricted by that. And I just thought it was important to have a PC right in here so I just don't have to plug in my laptop every time. Um, the MIDI interface is that Roland thing back there, and that plugs into the USB port on the computer. There's a D-Link Wi-Fi adapter in here. And um, audio, obviously the audio is plugged in via that green 3.5 millimeter jack into that power amplifier. And this monitor I just picked up used at a thrift store for a really great price. Just before I move on to anything else, this was all the circuitry that was mounted on the piece of plywood where the PC is now. And keep in mind, this is just for the two percussion stops and the 8 and 16 foot ranks on the pedal. All this circuitry was required for just five stops, I believe. And nowadays, really, all you need is an Arduino. It's just quite impressive how technology has progressed. Okay, so now we're on the front of the organ. And where the transposer used to be, I added a four-port USB hub. And that will allow me to easily plug in like flash drives and stuff so I can transfer MIDI files. Um, I just used the a router to expand the hole a little bit. I'm not a great woodworker, so I did screw up a little bit there. You can obviously, or you can honestly see the um, screw up much more on camera and than real life. I just touched it up with marker, but the flash from my camera and the lamp that I'm hovering above here makes it a little more pronounced on camera, but it doesn't look that bad in real life. This is just a doorbell. Um, when we got a ring doorbell, I took this off and kept it, and I'm glad I did because it looks pretty nice with the wood on here. Um, I just put a red LED in there, so when you turn the computer on, it glows red. Just put some more pistons on the bottom. Um, these pistons here are not momentary switches. When you push them in, they stay pushed until you press a different one. So I just bought a bunch of normally open switches, literally painted them white, 
and put them in that key slip down there. Um, I added new pedal lighting to the organ as well. It just had like a nightlight bulb before. I bought some more LED tape, stuck it on the bottom, and I ended up replacing the one in the music stand, which is right over here, as well, just so the colors match perfectly. And I can't turn that on right now because the switch on the um, music stand thing, the top of the organ, turns on the pedal light now as well. So when I get it all closed up and ready for a demonstration, I will show the pedal lights. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll close up the organ, hook it all up, put the monitor on top, and demonstrate it. So I will just be doing a quick demonstration of this organ in action. Um, and I have Hopverk open on the computer right now. Um, the Paramount 310 free theater organ sample set. So this is a free sample set that you can download even with the free version of Hopverk. And it works really well. Um, one thing I'd like to mention about aspect ratios. Uh, this monitor is a 4x3 aspect ratio which is the older style but it ends up working really well with Hopverk because I think at least this this is the version 4.2 and I haven't downloaded version 5 just because I have this on my computer or my other computer already um, it seems like it's optimized for 4x3 monitors so if you can get your hands on an older 4x3 monitor the organs will fill the screen much better than on a 16x9 monitor um, so in my setup right here I have the middle manual which is the great division on this theater organ Compared to the bottom manual on my console. I have the top manual, which is the solo division on this theater organ, paired to the top manual on my console. The bottom manual on the theater organ is the accompaniment division, uh, which unfortunately I don't have three manuals on this console, so it's just nothing right now. Um, and of course, the pedal board is tied to my pedal board on my console, and the two swell shoes on the theater organ are tied to my one swell shoe on this organ, just because this console has only one expression pedal. So I'll just demonstrate by playing a few notes, C chord, I'll show you it going on the screen. I'll do the same with the top manual, and this manual is completely done with the copper rail key switches, and as you can see they are working. And also on the great manual, or the bottom manual on this console, these two octaves are done with the copper rail, the modified switches, and they work as well. Pedal board, you can see, it's working there, and then the expression pedal, you can see, and you can even hear the uh, tremulance. So I'm very happy everything's working, um, but I have decided between the filming of the first part, which admittedly I did three days prior, and the filming of this part, that I am going to hook up the stops. Um, so there will be at least another part to this series. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but uh, there will be another part. And the reason I've decided to hook up the stops is just because stops are a huge part of the organ playing experience. And I'm just going to have to suck it up and give up some of the original sounds. I won't give up all of them though because these three pistons here I'm not planning on changing. And they will still work. So I won't lose all the original sounds. Even though chances are I'll never use the original sounds again. But uh, I just didn't want to lose it all. So essentially how I'm going to do this is these switches are toggle switches. Just like most organ stops. Um, if you move them, they stay in the position you leave them, and then same as for the opposite direction. What I'm thinking of doing, oops, I should have cancelled that, um, is turning them somehow into a momentary, normally open switch. So when you press it down and then you release it, it springs back up. Then I'll put some LED lights along the top of each stop to indicate whether or not each one is on or off. And it, it essentially turns these into those fancy lighted stop rails that you can buy um, at a fraction of the cost of course um, the only thing is I will need a MIDI decoder board for those LEDs so essentially 
Inside the organ, I have a MIDI encoder, which is the um, Arduino thing that I showed you earlier. And that takes all the signals from the keys and translates them into data, which the computer can interpret. MIDI decoder does the exact opposite. It takes data from the computer, turns it into stuff that the console can interact with, essentially. So just like lights on really fancy consoles, it will have like motorized stops um, or other forms of lights and stuff like that. Um, I actually have a MIDI decoder, but I'm not going to use this one because it's actually for another project that I'm working on, and that's why I have this little organ pipe sitting here. Um, about a year ago, I bought 56 organ pipes, so just shy of a rank. Um, it's a two-foot rank, and I was planning on building a little player pipe organ. I have all the parts, I have all the solenoid magnets, all the other pipes, and the MIDI decoder and also all the wire and I just haven't got around to building it yet so I really don't want to use this MIDI decoder because I already bought it for a specific reason and it has way too many outputs um, I believe this has 60 64 outputs and that is way more stops than this organ has and I can definitely purchase a smaller MIDI decoder online um, so I will do that eventually. I'll probably do it in two stages. So I'll just wire the stops so that they work. And then I will add the LEDs later. Um, one thing I, one other thing I should demonstrate before I go is the pistons. So I, it's hard to do this. I can't really show both at the same time, but uh, as I'm pressing these pistons, you can see on the screen that the stops are changing. And then as I press the general cancel, they're all canceled. Um, they're just paired to the first ge uh, 10 general, which are these ones right here. So that's about it for now. Um, I'll definitely be uploading a part four. I don't know when, but I will eventually. And uh, I'll be uploading more player piano videos soon. Uh, so to everybody, thanks for watching. Stay healthy and uh, have a great day.